After an armistice day, day marked by arrests and clashes between police and far right protesters, the Prime Minister has said he will meet with the Metropolitan Police Chief to hold him accountable for the disturbances. Armed Forces Minister James Heapy is uh, live at Westminster for us this morning. What do you do understand the Prime Minister will say to the Met Commissioner? Well, look, I, I think it's right that at times like these where um, highly contentious protests are happening, irrespective of their legitimacy, uh, are happening, that the government of the day will want to discuss with the police the way that they're being policed and reflect maybe some of the concerns that different parts of the community may have. In, at the local level, I do that quite routinely. If my constituents come to me saying that they're uneasy with a way that my local police force are doing their business, I'll go and see the chief constable, share those views. She may or she may not um, change anything as a consequence, but that's the kind of routine business of government and an interaction with an independent constabulary. As a member of parliament, as a, a minister, but also as a former major in our armed forces, you must have found those scenes um, on Saturday very upsetting, seeing the cenotaph being uh, stormed, um, alongside the anti-Semitism on the, uh, the marches. But on that cenotaph point, uh, because of your past military background, who do you think is to blame for um, the fact that things seem to get so out of hand at the cenotaph on Saturday? Those who um, were doing those counter-protests and involved in the scuffles at the cenotaph. You know, Ed, I, last week, there were a couple of things going on. There were a group of veterans who were very nervous that London wouldn't be safe for them to come to over the weekend to pay their respects. There were a group of veterans who felt that it was their duty to come to London and sort of be part of something to show the importance of Armistice Day um, compared to those, those protests. Uh, my friend Johnny Mercer, the Veterans Minister, did a great job in reassuring people that it was safe to come and saying to people that there was really no need for them to come and help the police or anything like that. But those veterans who had those concerns are a world away. They, they're the real patriots, but they're a world away from the thugs who turned up to try and storm the cenotaph. And whilst I wasn't at the cenotaph at 11 o'clock on Saturday for the armistice, um, what should have been a very solemn moment of silence ended up being a moment of confrontation, anger, hate, and that, as a veteran, um, I find deeply dispiriting. You know, the, the, the whole weekend has been mired in too much anger, too much hate, too much politics, when what we should be reflecting on this morning is the incredible work of poppy sellers, the wonderful way in which remembrance was marked across the land, and the great sacrifice of all of those who wore our nation's uniform and never came home. It was quite shocking to see um, those protesters at the Cenotaph um, shouting at the police, you're not English anymore, throwing uh, bottles, calling them the, the enemy. The Assistant Commissioner, uh, Mr Matt Twist, said, the following a week of intense debate about protest and policing, these all combine to increase community tension. Now, of course, the person in the government who was most... Um, making these arguments last week was the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, who accused the police of being, being biased mm -hmm. in their approach to policing. Do you think that she increased community tensions? Um, would you associate her, uh, yourself with the language which she used last week and then again overnight? Uh, no, I wouldn't have used the words that she used in her opinion piece, and as I've already said to you, I think, in the, the answer to the first question. It, it is the norm for MPs, ministers, the prime minister to reflect concerns over policing to the police, but that is ordinarily done privately. But it, it is also really important to say, because some opposition politicians, some in the commentariat, uh, have sought to uh, make a direct uh, link that everything that happened on Saturday was exclusively the consequence of what the Home Secretary wrote. It is a matter of fact that those protests uh, by the far right were being planned before the Home Secretary published that article. OK. Um, James Heapy, we've had confirmation via our political correspondent, Louisa James, from Downing Street, that there is a reshuffle taking place as we are interviewing you 
this morning. Do you think <laughs> the Home Secretary is about to lose her job? I, I've no idea, and I'm going to do my absolute best to not start twitching at my own phone. Ed, I think, will remember these days. Well, Ed was always in high office, and I suspect on the inside of things, but um, mm. look, if, if a reshuffle is starting, uh, then there'll be lots of colleagues who will be uh, excited to know what opportunity might be coming their way, and there'll be some that sadly mm. will miss out. All that I would say from my perspective is that to serve in government whether for a short time or for a long time, is an enormous honour. It's a way of serving your country. Um, I've been in the MOD for nearly four years now. Um, hopefully, a fifth is forthcoming. Um, but, you know, the Prime Minister decides these things. He chooses his government. Um, you just said you're going to resist the twitch to look at your phone. Do you have your phone with you? Because you are more than welcome to look at your yes. phone right now no, while we're on air. And the, and the great thing, well, so as, as I suspect that uh, Ed will be able to, to, to tell you that the sort of, that these days tend to start with sadly those who are getting, um, who are getting bad news. Um, the great thing about being an MOD minister on a day like today is that because so much of the paper on our desk and the content of our conversations is top secret, we lock our phones okay. well down the corridor right. and You out might of the way, want to so. check it because the BBC's political editor, Chris Mason, is reporting that Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, has been sacked. So, uh, Suzanne, I, I, I'm not going to check my phone and offer commentary. If what you say is the case, then um, that is a decision that the Prime Minister has made, but I, I don't know that that is the case. Uh, it is... Um, pretty challenging to be live on air uh, being asked to offer real-time commentary uh, when you know more of what's going on than I do. Would it come as any surprise to you? Look, the Prime Minister makes these decisions uh, and uh, I've said that I would not have used the words that the Home Secretary used in her opinion piece last week. The one thing I would say, Mr Heapy, I was once doing a live interview during a reshuffle. My phone w went and it said Gordon Brown and I didn't answer it. Uh, and that might have been a mistake. So my advice to you is if the phone rings and it says Rishi Sunak, don't worry about us, answer the phone. Well, Ed, at least your phone rang. Mine is deathly silent. Right. So, you have say, got, so just to confirm, you've had no texts to confirm... That news that we're hearing this morning reports that your colleague, the Home Secretary, has been sacked. No. No, okay. but, but, Susanna, I, that's not quite how it works anyway. It's not as if the government would text out to all of the other ministers to say who's been appointed, who's okay. been let go. Um, I, it, it's just not the way that it works. If it's the case, what would you say about the Home Secretary? <laughs> has she been a good uh, um, operator S Suzanne, in her you're job? you're asking... You're, you're asking me something that's impossible to answer because it, it may be that it's not the case. It may be, I mean, Chris Mason has impeccable sources, but maybe it's not the case that what he says is true. And so I'm not going to <laughs> offer a commentary on whether or not she is or is not in post, and I'm not going to offer a case on whether that is the right or wrong thing to do. This is the Prime Minister's business. Okay. He chooses who How would you describe her government. as a Home Secretary? Has she done a good job, do you think? Look, there is, the Home Office is an incredibly demanding brief within which there are a number of issues that are very politically contentious and where, frankly, there is no obviously right answer. And in that sense, it takes a politician that is courageous and has the confidence in their convictions to do the job well. And there are lots of things that Suella Braverman as Home Secretary has done well. I've made no secret in the course of this interview in my, with my disagreement with some of the words she used in her piece next week. Um, but, you know, I, I, your viewers will be enjoying my discomfort, but it is incredibly Mr. difficult to offer we feel as though, I just don't know what's going on. We feel as though we should put you out of your misery because you need to answer your phone. And this is a, an interview where you can't possibly answer any of our questions. And the good news is... is that we can go to our political um, editor, Louisa James, who's at Westminster, who I think probably knows more than you about what's going on. So, Louisa. Yes, I can answer your question. I can tell you that in the last couple of minutes, Downing Street have confirmed to me that uh, Suella Braverman has, in their words, uh, been asked to leave government and has accepted. So the reshuffle is definitely on. Um, we 
sort of knew it was about to happen, I think, because Downing Street started to fill with the kind of people that we usually see on the morning of a, a cabinet meeting or uh, as a significant arrival. So we suspected that something uh, was about to happen and then we had that confirmation. Now, so far, uh, we've just had that confirmation of the one uh, removal from government. What tends to happen is that those people who are asked to leave their jobs go in by the back door and we don't see them walking up Downing Street and those who have been uh, summoned to accept new jobs walk in the front door. Now, uh, on that, uh, following on from that, I can tell you that in the last few minutes, as you might have seen, the Foreign Secretary, or the current Foreign Secretary at least, James Cleverley, has gone into Downing Street. I asked him if he had a new job. He didn't say anything. Uh, but he is the first uh, Cabinet arrival we have seen so far this morning. I'm going to keep an eye on my phone and I will keep you updated uh, when we hear more. OK, Louisa, thank you very much indeed. So confirmation that while we have been on a, the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, uh, has been sacked. And um, as Louisa was just reporting, those going in the front door, apparently, well, you'll know this, Ed. So the Foreign Secretary going in the front door, does that mean he might have been asked to uh, move into a different position or perhaps just gone in to be updated on what's going on and, and retain his role? The Foreign Secretary is not going in there by chance. Uh, this is not because he's popping in for a coffee. This is choreographed. Number 10 will know exactly what they're doing. If um, the Foreign Secretary is walking in the front door, that is likely to mean that he is going to change his job. And if you're the Foreign Secretary, unless he's about to become Chancellor Exchequer mm -hmm. uh, and Jeremy Hunt is to be moved, there's been speculation about that. You know, at the moment, we don't know, but it could mean that um, Mr Cleverley is about to become the Home Secretary. Well...